So there are a bunch of interesting games that happened over this weekend in the uh, LCS playoffs. For one, I did not expect uh, Liquid to beat CLG. I kind of expected uh, Dardock and Piglet to just solo carry and stomp all over CLG's face, but that didn't happen. CLG played a very great game. They proved that well, I already knew this, but they proved that they could do more than just have Darshan just split push the whole time. And they came out and played well. And I have to say, Dardot kind of... I don't know. It just seemed like... So what I expected was for Dardot to just totally outclass X Smithy, Like we saw another jungler outclass Rainover this weekend. That's what I thought would happen. But X Smithy stayed. He kept up with Dardock and just kind of out jungle Dardock throughout the whole time. And Darshan just went off on a lot of games, and Afro Mu just led his team to victory. But the game that I really want to talk about, or the series that I really want to talk about, is this TSM versus Immortal series because this was my shit. I totally expected. I didn't expect them to 3-0. I expected them to 3-1. I expected TSM to have some nerves in the first game, them to be a little bit nervous, have a little bit of confident issues, but them to lose a close game. And then they came back game two, like, we can play with these guys, shake off the nerves, shake the nerves off, and then they just come and they give Immortals the business. But instead, what happened was, is... They just had a bad early game, and then they just out team fought Immortals and uh, my man Sven Scarin and Hauntzer. They both just went off, and Immortals had no answer for the Maokai because they decided to pick a Lucian top with Lucian's OPTP flanks, and they just couldn't really do much with the Maokai with 380 carries. Which is kind of scary. It just kind of shows you how strong tanks actually are. If you have 380 carries and the Maokai is just unkillable. But then again, if you think about it. I mean, it just makes it very easy for the Maokai to build. Uh, to build efficiently. Because you know exactly who you're building for. Even though Corky has a good amount of magic damage. It's not that hard to build against 380 carries. And, uh... Corky wasn't really even that strong because he was just getting stomped on by Bjergsen. And while Turtle was Jen, and Jen has a very hard time dealing with tanks. Especially if he has to kite back and not do damage because he has to be worried about getting blown up by everybody else trying to get into his face. So all you have to do was just kill 180 carry and then... Because the 80 carries are squishy. It's not like they're tank 80 carries or anything. It's not like it was Graves or anything. All you had to do was kill one 80 carry and become the two team threat. So after they won, or two threat team. So after they won that one game, I feel like Immortals just tilted and they didn't play like they normally did and they just tried to. They played very desperate. Sven Scarin went off, ran over, it looked like he didn't know what to do. Uh, Huni just never played a tank. I mean, he never played a tank. He never played a meta champion. He never played tank Echo, which surprised the hell out of me. I thought that was the only game. I thought that he would just give Hauntzer Smaokai some problems with the tank Echo, but obviously that didn't happen. Uh, which... That means that instead of playing a carry jungler like Nidalee or Kindred, uh, Rainover had to play Rek'Sai and Gragas the whole split. And he was just stuck on engage duty, like Double have said. Uh, so you had a top laner that kept getting blown up because the Lucian was pretty useless the first game. Huni went like 0 oh, and like 20 on game plank the second game. His Graves was better, but like he still made weird TP plays. He either TP'd late 
or he just wasn't really at team fights for most of the time and I don't know the way I thought it would go was that it was pretty much how it went I thought that Hanser would have a huge impact much more of an impact on the team fights as compared to Huni because Hanser is just a very good tank player I thought that Bjergsen would just take a dump all over uh, Pobelter's Belt Belt face and I thought that the bot lane for TSM would just be able to go even which is pretty much what happened the whole time and uh because while Turtle was stuck on Jen duty the whole game Jen is not the type of AD carry that Wild Turtle is used to playing Wild Turtle plays very mobile very he plays a bunch of AD carries or I feel like this is the type of AD carry he plays when he plays his best he plays the type of AD carry that has a lot of outplay potential where he can jump in and out and make plays himself like a Kalista, like a Lucian, like a Ezreal but he was just stuck having to be a backline damage damage source on Jen, and I don't think he's just comfortable doing that. I feel like I'm surprised he just didn't like try to flash in for a kill and die ever. Usually, if he died, it's because Sven Skarin had a great play on him, or somebody just caught him out with a uh, with a pretty good play. But I just don't think he was ever comfortable on Jen, and I think that's why uh, TSM won that game is because. Immortals just couldn't adapt to the meta properly. They said that they had a poor meta read. I just don't think they tried to play the meta. I think they just said to themselves, we can just beat TSM and every team in the NA doing what we do best. Have Huni carry, have Wild Turtle go even or win bottom lane, and then we just steamroll the team. And because of that disrespect that they had for the NA, they've lost. Now, there's my phone. Now, for the final games, I expect TL to beat uh to beat Immortals just because of the fact that Immortals. I don't think Immortals will have a good grasp of the meta by then. I think they're still gonna try to do the exact same thing that they did to uh, TSM. I expect Team Liquid to win in five. I think it's going to be pretty hard because I don't think that Team Liquid has the talent that TSM has. I mean, they're a really good team, but and before Team Liquid was definitely the better team, like by far. But TSM was that team where as soon as they just got their heads out of their ass and learned how to play with each other, they were going to be everybody expected them to be the best team in NA. So I don't think that Team Liquid has the talent that TSM has. So it's going to be a little bit harder. They don't have a Bjergsen on their team, so it's going to be a little bit harder. But I do think that just because they have a good concept of the meta as compared to Immortals, I do think that Liquid will win. Now, if Immortals plays the meta, it will be more interesting. But I don't know how it will go if Immortals try to play the meta. But I'm just going to say that Team Liquid wins a 5. And I'm going to say that TSM beat CLG in either 3 or 4. If they win that first game, they win in 3. But I expect them to lose the first game and then win the next 3. Because I think that in every single role, uh, TSM is just better or just as good as CLG. I give TSM the edge in top and mid, and dark, I mean Bjergsen is just going to be able to carry harder than anybody on TSM can, and if Sven Skarin keeps playing the way he has, then I just think that it's going to be an easy finals for TSM, but it's going to be entertaining to watch. Now I am not a genius of League of Legends, but I do hope that you guys have agreed with me enough to like the video and subscribe to my channel. This is King Dub signing out. Peace.